So hello everyone, if you're watching later, if you're watching on YouTube as well. Um, so what we're going to be doing today, and I'm very excited about where the journey is taking us, um, is to look at Saturn. Um, now Saturn's often seen as male, but I want to explore Saturn as the dark mother. Um, and in the Kabbalah, she is Bina, which is there's all these spheres, and Bina is the, the top one, uh, feminine one, um, which is attributed to Saturn. So she does have this, um, if you think of uh, the form of the feminine, um, then that's the Saturn mother element. Um, and so she seems pretty important in this Venus star uh, process that we're in, because I'm going to show you two charts in a bit, but you'll see that she has um, an exact relationship with two of the portal gates, which are the next two coming up. So that's why we're doing Saturn right now, because... I feel like if we get the Saturn bit of this, that we're going to be able to go much deeper into this whole journey with Venus. And like every cycle tells you something different, opens up new possibilities. Um, so it's very interesting that these uh, goddesses, Hecate, um, Morgan, Nimue, the Enchantress, and I've been drawn into Circe now, the Enchantress as well. So they're all sort of calling for attention, um, but they have this dark goddess and and especially this dark mother um, energy that um, I want to explore. And um, I can't, I'm not saying I know all the answers, but this is my kind of take on it. And in the chat afterwards be really interesting to hear how you connect with that and what's going on in your life that might um, have resonances with this. Okay, so let me share the screen and um, I'm gonna run through this and then we'll have a conversation. And I've actually also got some journaling questions so we'll do the journaling questions first actually and then we'll leave a bit of time for sharing at the end so hopefully the journaling questions can help us get to more specific um, answers about Saturn so this is about the Venus moon gates and Saturn so um so Venus is in her morning star phase and she's descending through these gates into the underworld. And this is mirrored in the story of um, the descent of Inanna into the underworld to meet her dark sister, Eresh Gigol. So already built for thousands of years into this process is the idea we're going to meet and integrate parts of ourselves that are neglected, repressed, and, and the idea is that we are becoming more whole, we're, be, we're owning parts of ourselves that our culture, our experience has um, caused us to be embarrassed or ashamed or afraid of, and so we're on the journey towards wholeness and totality is an, another nice word. So this is actually Hecate. Uh, she shares some relationship to Saturn in this underworld kind of energy. Okay, so I found this bit of art, Saturn as Female by June Ahn. I think that's how you say it. And I'm trying to use art more in my presentations rather than words. So Saturn has rings you'll be aware of that um and the rings of saturn they kind of make it kind of in a way easy for us to remember what saturn is about because it's about boundaries um and structures 
So Saturn in the body represents our bones, which are structure, and it represents our skin, which is our, our physical boundary between our body and, and the outside environment. Um, and as I say, Saturn is usually seen as male, but in the Kabbalah, um, Saturn rules Bina, which is the dark mother and the form. Um, and I, I find it really useful to think of Saturn in, in these many aspects. And, and Saturn in astrology traditionally was linked to the father, um, but often nowadays is linked to the mother because the mother really, in many ways, provides our structure for our life, our routines. Our, if you imagine the, the daily routines are our structure of life and our belief systems. So it really depends on the individual life, but certainly the mother is a is can be the Saturn parent, who's also the one who brings in this wonderful thing called discipline. <laughs> and uh, have as, as someone with a Venus Jupiter conjunction in my chart, I have a bit of a slight aversion to that Saturnian discipline and restriction, but it's definitely something I'm maturing into as I grow older. So yesterday, um, I was thinking about Saturn, and yesterday we had a wonderful teachers, Soul Tribe Online teachers meeting, and we were talking about the lines of our vocation. And um, one of the things that came out of that is that the guru that we speak of in Kundalini Yoga and the the miracle mantra holds the space of dark and light. And this is its transforming power is actually in the holding of both. And this is what we are wanting to be ourselves. Um, we wanting to be able to hold light and dark paradox um, duality. You know, we, we want to kind of be in the, a, a place where we're not, um, getting hooked into um, a kind of extreme ideas or extreme pathways. It's almost like we're, we're trying to stay in this middle path of neutrality, um, even when our mind really wants to hang on to ideas and, and things. So the outcome of the journey really is don't expect yourself to be good all the time or expect life to be good all the time and really it's about how we deal with challenge not that we're trying to eradicate all bad bad parts as we see them from ourselves you know we're trying to hold everything that being a human means so it's a very human journey and I've talked about Inanna helps us to integrate the dark feminine Arishkigal and the gene keys, I think, is really good because it helps us find the gift in our shadow and it gives us some very specific words around that. So, um, so I'm going to show you the chart um, in a minute of the gate. Um, it's actually next Tuesday, the 10th of October, but we're going to do the ceremony on Monday, the 9th at this time, but we'll start an hour earlier. So we've got two hours. Um, and so in this gate, which um, the Venus and Moon are in Jinky 59 line two, which is this very powerful Jinky that's to do with intimacy and um, honesty, transparency. And right directly opposite it is um, Saturn in Jinky 55, um, in, also in the line one. And I wanted to read this little passage by Liz Green because it shows the relationship of inner freedom to the way Saturn works with us as um, a planet that brings obstacles and constrictions and it's, it's considered quite a difficult planet by astrologers. 
So the frustrating experiences which are connected with Saturn are obviously necessary as they are educational in a practical as well as psychological sense. Whether we use psychological or esoteric terminology, the basic fact remains the same. Human beings do not earn free will except through self-discovery and they do not attempt self-discovery until things have become so painful that they have no other choice. Sometimes we do decide now that we're going to choose self-discovery before we get to that. Um, although few astrologers would consider Saturn a very cheerful bedfellow, the necessity of Saturnian experience is grudgingly recognized. There can be a joy in this kind of experience. That there can be a joy in this kind of experience is usually not so easily recognized. And anyone who enjoys his pain is considered to be a masochist. However, it is, it is not enjoyment of the pain which Saturn fosters, but rather the exhilaration of psychological freedom. This is often not realized because many, not many people have experienced it. And, and that really excites me. I've always been so interested in Nelson Mandela and how he found freedom in this tiny prison cell. And so I kind of have known all my life that it's possible and uh, and yeah, so it's really interesting now this time of life to be actually experiencing this inner freedom. Um, yeah, Saturn is actually um, transiting my north node, which is like a really powerful transit. And I was like, oh, my God, I'm not feeling Saturn like so badly, but um actually the themes of Saturn like illness my father's very ill and my brother's not so good because he's going through a divorce and and actually there's a lot of Saturn issues going on in my life but it's interesting that I'm not feeling the kind of crunch of Saturn like I have in the past so um, I'm trying to open this a bit, but I can't. So hopefully you can open it a bit more on your screen. Um, and here, let me pick up the pen, the spotlight. So over here in the seventh house, you can see the Venus moon gate, the conjunction. And um, there will be seven of these. Where this is going to be the second one going down. So it's it resonates with the sixth chakra. If the seventh began with the crown, we're going to resonate with the sixth chakra in this one. And you can see it's at one degrees Virgo, 20 minutes. This is Gene Key 59, line two. If you put the Gene Keys around the zodiac, then you can find out which Gene Keys are which parts of the zodiac. Um, so this is the chart for the 10th of October, remember, 1010, quite an interesting numerology. And you can see here is Saturn directly opposite at one degree Pisces, one minute. So this is Gene Key 55. Um, other things just to point out as we go along, we have a Venus Astrea conjunction in Cancer, watery Cancer, so this can really help with ancestral healing. Um, we've got the priestess archetype combined with the sacred artist. So this can be around creativity. And it's in the 52nd gene key, which is um, to do with helping us get out of stress through restraint and silence. Um, stillness, sorry, stillness. So that's one interesting thing. Uh, another interesting thing is we've got a lot of planetary activity going on in Libra here. So we've got Mercury, Pallas Athena, the Sun, South Node and Mars all in um, Libra at, um, at the time. I think they're all in Libra right now as well. 
and um, also all the outer planets are retrograde. And when this happens, it means that um, you get a lot of dissonance in the collective as things are kind of sorted out. It's like digging over old ground, the retrograde. So imagine all those planets that are working on our collective consciousness going retrograde at the same time. They bring these very intense periods of change. Okay, so... Da -da. So just to show you, this will be the Venus moon gate for November. That will be on the 9th of November uh, in Jinky 46 line four. I'm very excited about that one. <laughs> um, I know it comes up a lot in our field, the Jinky 46. And it's, it's like the Jinky of complete feminine embodiment that's like how I feel this very sensual wonderful energy through this 46 um so you can see the Venus moon gate there's at one degree Libra seven minutes conjunction and it's in what's called a quincux to Saturn um and the quincux is 150 degrees. It's much more subtle than the um, opposition. So this suggests the this next gate, 10th of October, will be quite a strong Saturn themes of restriction, control, maybe feeling trapped coming up. And then by the time we reach the November gate, if we've kind of really gone into Saturn, we can potentially transform into this more subtle spiritual energy. Okay, so some thoughts. Um, so Saturn is in Pisces. So if you imagine Saturn is about forms and structures and and building, and then you have oceanic Pisces dissolving it. <laughs> So it's very frustrating when you have Saturn in Pisces because you're trying to build things and it's like the oceanic energy just like washes them away again. But what this can lead us to is a much deeper surrender to divine will. It's like um, throw the oars out of the boat. <laughs> the, the ocean is going to take us where it's going to take us. And Pisces is all about unity. And this may signal the death of the ego as well. So if we imagine this 59-55 um, axis is part of this incoming cross called the sleeping phoenix, which is coming into play um, and will arrive properly in 2027. But we're in the lead up now. And so Saturn... Um, in this in this place in the 55 is really preparing us for the the period ahead where you know we might find and we're seeing this society becoming more and more restrictive and so we're going to have to access this inner freedom in order to be able to kind of stay okay really stay out of um feeling panicky in that situation so I've mentioned Gene Key 55. Um, it's in the Gene Keys, it's the evolutionary force that's coming up and the involutionary force coming down is the 22nd Gene Key of Grace. Um, and these two um, are like spirit infusing into matter. And, and so the seven sacred seals, a lot of the Gene Keys programs are all about how we integrate spirit into matter within our bodies. So Saturn is anchoring, grounding. It's about discernment, discipline, slow growth, patience, wisdom, sustainability. And it's actually very good um, planet to have in a marriage chart because it shows the longevity of relationships. Um, blockages can it can also bring blockages, restrictions, closed doors, loneliness is a big one with Saturn, illness, 
um, feeling trapped. So it was quite funny. I had, um, can I come out of this for a minute? I had this amazing experience with um, mosquitoes. So mosquitoes showed up in this fear of, um, <laughs> I can see someone going, oh. This fear of getting trapped is what mosquito is about. And, and then, like, I have my little Gene Keys dream arc thing here, and a mosquito died on it. <laughs> and then, as if I was sort of going to ignore the mosquito, because I didn't really want to go into the mosquito. Um, and then we were out with some people, and this guy tells me that Rupert Graves, who was one of these war poets, actually died um, from a mosquito bite that went septic. I'm like, oh, my God, I better go and look at mosquito. So it's really good, actually. Um, I'm glad you're here, Tara, because this energy of Saturn is so good for the cleanse, you know, the helping to discipline, to say no to things. And this is actually what Mosquito is all about, this energy of discipline and um, being able to kind of um, take things out of our lives that are causing us problems at a body level. So I feel we could uh, maybe invite Mosquito into the cleanse as, <laughs> as our kind of power animal. Um, and yeah, yeah, very interesting. And then also the Saturnian issue about feeling trapped, you know, and, and that, but that 55 energy somehow allowing us possibly to find the inner freedom you know, because whenever we're feeling lack of freedom, um, the Gene Keys kind of encourage us to go inwards with that and Saturn as well, um, rather than trying to change what's going on outwardly is actually try and change how we are experiencing the moment of not freedom and what it means to us, really. OK. Um, so just go back into this. Um, right, another quote from Liz Green. Of all the planets, only Saturn appears to have an exclusively material value. But as we have seen, this is deceptive because his, her function is to demonstrate the relativity of all tangible values. Through Saturn, everything on the material plane takes on a new meaning because it is seen as a symbol for an inner quality or state of being. Security may be defined very differently when viewed this way. So if we want a house or money or a car, any of these things, what Saturn is saying is focus on what that actually means to you inwardly. Um, rather than kind of the actual car, what does the car actually mean to you and how will it make you feel? And, you know, um, if the car means you would feel better, you know, is that kind of real or is, is that uh, something that's more of a superficial change? Okay, so let's... Let's do, um, where are we up to? We're 27 minutes. So let's do just like 10 minutes of writing and then we'll share um, uh, what, what's going on. So we'll just do a couple of minutes on these different questions. So the first question is, where am I feeling restricted in my life right now? So if we just take a couple of minutes to write some notes um, on that a little bit down and, and actually we'll share on that first and then we'll do the second question. So, so just see what comes out.
I'm actually going to stop recording as well. I do the next question. Um, so that um, that bit about the interplay between Saturn and Uranus is interesting because if Saturn is about restriction, Uranus is about um, you know the the freedom. It's a freedom planet and. Uh, so my dad was born on a almost exact Saturn Uranus conjunction in Gemini. And it's interesting to see that play out through his life. So he was always very responsible as a father and a husband, very kind of religious man. Um, and he expressed his freedom by going off with his job, traveling in He'd go mm. off to sugar farms in Africa and he'd love that, you know, <laughs> being off there in the wilds. And, um, but, yeah, as you're saying it, it's interesting because um, he's got Parkinson's now. So it's interesting to almost see Saturn overtaking Uranus and this kind of complete paralysis and restriction of movement. Um, and these Saturnian things can really manifest through the body if we don't if we don't know how to work the energy. So they they can be extremely destructive, which is why Saturn has quite a bad reputation. <laughs> but I feel like uh, with yoga, like yogis and learning how to work the energies and use discipline in a, a positive way um, and be balanced as well. We can actually, um, we can uh, make Saturn our friend, really. Um, yeah. And what did yeah. you think of the mosquito? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that was really interesting. <laughs> You know, we, we've had, um, we don't normally get mosquitoes here, but because of all the rain that we've had this past year, uh, everybody's talking about mosquitoes here as well. <laughs> I haven't honestly like seen any around my house, but apparently it's like a thing here in the Valley. There's a bunch of them. So the medicine is there. <laughs> Excellent. <laughs> oh, well, I'll pause the recording again. So, um, yeah, so what it brought up for me was um, around restricted in um, earning money, which partly has to do with me moving, being nomadic, but it, it's felt like um, I'm sort of rebuilding, I guess. So um, Saturn can be a help to me. But um, what was quite interesting is I actually read Saturn in Taurus in Liz Green's book earlier and, and I'm an absolutely classic one of the things she talks about which is um so Saturn in um Saturn in Taurus and the second house can either be very materialistic and really afraid of not having belongings and stuff or they can go to the other extreme which is I think where I've gone which is almost like having money and material possessions is is like not spiritual it's it's bad you know and I kind of grew up under apartheid where money was <laughs> used in quite you know it was very oppressive around money so I think I got it from that really and I think maybe I've been a past life a, a nun and a monk and stuff so um, so I've kind of like overcome basically the idea that money is bad and um, I definitely get it, making huge strides with that and feeling that this natural prosperity is part of our awakening. You know, we can't actually awaken unless we plug into this natural prosperity and stuff. So, yeah. So that's been really good, actually. Okay, so what time are we at? Yeah, we've got a bit more time. So let's do, um, I'll just do a couple of minutes on another question. Um, so the second question 
was um, what am I anchoring into? So if uh, if Saturn is about the very anchoring, grounding energy, what is it that I'm anchoring into right now? Yeah, just to share a little story while you're finishing off there. So um, I've been quite into Julian of Norwich for quite a few years, um, who I first came across. Uh, Richard Rudd does the series called The Ecstatics. Um, it's a free thing. And Julian of Norwich is one of them he talks about and got really inspired by her. Um, um, so she was an anchoress, which basically means in, I think it's the 14th century, um, her hermitage was built around her, so she could not leave the actual physical building. Uh, but people used to come, she's in the town called Norwich, and they would speak with her, get, get her wisdom. And she had these incredible visions Um in a in a death experience really so um anyway last night we went to a julian of norwich meditation group up the road which was fantastic and we just kind of meditated on some words in silence for half an hour and it was so powerful um and it kind of reminded me like when i went through this whole christian part of my journey that my higher self used to say to me, you, you're an anchoress. And I'd be like, I don't want to be in a building. <laughs> Which is a very Saturn thing, I think. You know, imagine being like trapped in this building, um, literally. Um, but that is how the anchoress's spirituality evolves. And anyway, thankfully, I don't have to do that in this lifetime. Um but um, one of the things I was writing about is um, how I found myself around so many line six people in my life <laughs> on Soul Tribe, in other groups. Um, Adam's a line six. So I feel like my line one um, is helps to anchor, especially line six people, and they help to pull me up. So there's this kind of pull between the one and six line. So all my line six friends are doing something for me and I'm doing something for them as well. Um, yeah. Yeah. So interesting one. So, yeah, anyone, anyone else got anything interesting on the anchoring that came through there? Um, at the moment, I'm really anchoring into sisterhood and what that means, because uh, I think there's a lot of, well, for me, definitely, there was a lot of struggle with regards to being a sister and then what that actually meant to me and how it, what it meant to other people. Um, and so accepting others as part of me and understanding that all these new energies need to be nurtured with a tender heart and awareness allows us as sisters to maybe open our hearts a little bit more to the betrayal or the damage or whatever past um, situations may have come up. And then adapting the new energies um, to deepen my ability to surrender without that agenda and to trust life. So that's my two, really. That's my life's work. And, and you're not supposed to have an agenda. So it's really allowing me, these new energies are allowing me to, to surrender um, and wait patiently to see the outcome rather than um, trying to create an outcome, I suppose, or, or you know, manipulate an outcome, maybe. It's just sitting in, in, in the energies and allowing them to go through me. Uh, just quickly on, on the mosquito. So the night of the dream arc. So we had the dream arc call and I sat outside on the balcony because it was quite late and I was watching the stars and whatnot. And when I came in, my right knee was covered in mozzie bites and my right toe 
which apparently the right side is good luck and the left side is not such good luck. I looked it up spiritually. And then I had my star of consciousness the next night where we all had to pick a, a, a number for the month. And of course it was the 39. So yeah, it came the night before. So Danny, if you're bitten all over, live up the 39 and, and, and see what it, what it brings for you. So nice coincidences. Going on. Thank you. Okay, so just to say a few things before we go, um, rebirth sequence on Wednesday, bring your radiance um, dream arc animals along. And if you don't know them, just bring your radiance key along and we'll do some writing on those. Um, and yeah, anyone watching this on YouTube, you're welcome to come join us live in this wonderful conversation <laughs> um, on Soul Tribe Online. So I'll post the details of how to subscribe um, below. And Satna, we'll have a wonderful time and we're going to pop on to the next call with Danny now, Body Talk. And often I love the weaving between the two <laughs> that happens. So... Looking forward to that. So, bye everyone.